breathing. Line six. Enemy in the area, approach with caution. Line seven. Line nine. Desert. First and last name is Paulo Da Silva. It's P-A-U-L-O D-A-S-I-L-V-A. -S -S I'm a 68 whiskey out of Fort Sill, Oklahoma. We, we still pushed through, even though we knew we were gonna struggle with it. We just, I think all of us were just looking at each other, just knowing that we're gonna go through it together and we just kept pushing. No matter how hard it got, like, you know, uh, we were all there for each other, so we just, we just kept grinding right through it, yeah. I think these tasks and drills are very important for us as soldiers because you join to defend this nation. So yeah, you understand that you're gonna get an MOS title that's probably not gonna be combat unless it's a combat title. <laughs> but um, it's good to know these things because anytime a nation comes into defense mode or, or if we have to go help out another ally or another country, we gotta be ready to be on that. Going through this land really showed us that um, we really need to enforce more training, more readiness, just to be prepared for these types of situations at all times. Oh yeah, so going through this lane and knowing that we were uh, doing extra stuff and at that point of breaking, having that squad next to you, I mean, it's one thing to get through it yourself, but when you look at someone else trying as hard, going through the same exact stuff, it just motivates you. You just got to keep pushing. So I think our team did really, really good at that. We all were struggling, we're all going through it, but nobody, nobody threw in the towel. We just, we just kept going. So, and I think that's, that's what our team's about really, for sure. So it's, it's good. I think it's a great challenge for everybody all around. Um, we started off just, just patrolling. And then um, actually, no, we started off with the radio. So we had to set up our radio and then we started our patrol. And once we started our patrol, we realized uh, just, just about 25 meters out, um, we had contact. Um, there we returned fire, suppressed it. We got a casualty right there, so we had to load, get him to a safe spot. We, the returning kit on him, dragged him to a safe spot, uh, suppressed fire. We uh, missed the LMTV, so it got, that was one of the spots where we had extra work. But hey, we still pulled it through. Um, suppressed that fire. We bounded past, and then shortly after that, we had to go clear a room which we, we did pretty good. We cleared the room, we got the detainee, and we actually got the weapon out of them so they weren't no longer hostile. And after that, we left there. We took the, we took the casualty to the um, LZ where um, we actually had a Seaburn attack. So we had to don our mask, put our mop. Um, after that, we had to shift, shift course and actually go to the other LMV where we had to take two different casualties because we found one out there at the Seaburn site. And we loaded them up on the LMTV. After that, we saw enemies about, about maybe 75 meters out. We bounded up to them, suppressed the fire, threw grenades at them, cleared that site, bounded past their fallen uh, helicopter. And then after that, we had to do 240 checks and a 249 functions check and disassembly, reassembly, and that was the end of the course. Well, coming out of Fort Sill, we, um, our unit really likes to challenge each other. Just get together and they, they put it out. They say, hey, we got this competition coming up. Who, uh, who wants to volunteer? And 
you just get thrown in it. So first hands up, you get put in, and really anybody can go in. Uh, specialist Devin Anderson, I'm a 68 kilo, that's a medical laboratory technician, uh, stationed out of Fort Riley, Kansas, working from Irwin Army Community Hospital. I think we did pretty well. We worked together well. Uh, it's very physically taxing, so the exhaustion kind of gets to you towards the end, but it was, uh, we, I think we did well. Uh, because in a real life situation, your team is counting on you, so you you have to train like you fight. So you keep you just have to keep that in mind and make sure you don't let your team down. Uh, they're they're immensely important, especially with the conflicts going on around the globe. You know, anything could happen, and we have to be ready for it. Uh, so these skills, if you don't practice them, you'll lose them. Effective communication will keep you keep your team on the right track, and you won't be stepping on each other's toes. So if everybody knows where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing, it just allows everything to flow smoothly and uh, removes a lot of error. You have an expectation of what it's going to be, but when you're actually out here doing it and it's hot, sandy, you're getting sunburned, it, it all stacks up. I was asked by my NCOIC, uh, my first sergeant had asked if I would be willing to participate. and. It's a good opportunity. It's not something we get to do every day working in a hospital. It's, it allows me to practice the skills that I don't get to use often. And it just gets me seeing new things, doing new things. I said yes just because I, I enjoy competition. It's, it's fun to get out there and compete and see how you stack up against the other uh, soldiers.